Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2013 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so of course, we're going to take a read of the information at first. So it says on 1 May 2012, the owner of a business started with 80,000 in the bank. Below are his three balance sheets on 1 May, 2nd May, and the 3rd of May. Okay, so let's take a look at these balance sheets. So on the 1st of May, we're seeing a balance sheet here. Now, of course, this may not look like a balance sheet with which you are familiar. It is the old horizontal format of a balance sheet where you have your assets on the left side and the capital and liabilities. Well, there are no liabilities here, so just capital on the right hand side. And of course, you might be tempted to say, but it's a T account, as a debit side, as a credit side. No, 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 no. It's a balance sheet. On a balance sheet, there are no debit sides or credit sides. There's the left side and the right side. But of course, you should be familiar with the vertical format in which there are no sides. But this, again, is an old, simplified version. Now, what it's showing is that we have assets of 80,000 just in the bank, and that came from the capital. Right? The owner invested 80000 in capital and that went to the bank. Now, the second balance sheet that follows is showing us something that happened on the 2nd of May. Well, it's showing us the aftermath, I should say. We are seeing now we have bank 72.5 and equipment 7500. On the right-hand side, the capital figure is still 80000 So relative to the balance sheet above, the capital figure, the right-hand side, is unchanged. But the left-hand side, the asset side, Right. Initially, we just had bank of 80,000, but now we have bank of 72.5 and equipment of 7,500. All right. So it looks like we spent some money out of the bank to buy some equipment. OK, not bad. Now, on the 3rd of May, we have yet another balance sheet. Now, what we're seeing here is that the equipment is still there, 7,500. But look at this. The bank has now decreased from the balance that was on the 2nd of May. So to go down from 72.5 to 67.5, that's a decrease of 5,000, which is actually mirrored on the right-hand side, sorry, almost a credit side, right? So on the 2nd of May, we had 80,000 in capital, and we see here that capital went down from 80 to 75. Now, capital goes down either when the business makes a loss or when the owner withdraws money or any resource for his or her own personal use, which is, as you know, called drawings. Now, let's see what they're asking us to do. So it says here, describe the transaction that occurred on the 2nd of May and on the 3rd of May. So a transaction is something, of course, where there's a change in value. Usually we describe it as an exchange of value, which could work in some cases, in most cases, I should say. Now, on the 2nd of May, what we're seeing is that that's where the bank account decreased and equipment increased. Relative, of course, to what happened, or sorry, the balance sheet on the 1st of May, where we started with 80000 in the bank. So what happened here was simple. We used money from the bank account to buy equipment. Or, as I have across here, phrased slightly differently, bought equipment with 7500 paying by check. Okay, simple and straightforward. And now on the 3rd of May, what we saw happen was that the bank account went down from 72500 to 67,500, which was again mirrored by a similar movement in capital, downward movement in capital from 80,000 to 75,000. So that was a decrease of 5,000 in both bank and capital. And as I said, the only thing that explains that is that the owner withdrew 5,000 of, um, of money out of the bank for his or her own personal use. So, and you're seeing that here. Owner withdrew 5,000 from the bank account for their own personal use. Okay, so that's the end of part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so the question reads as follows. R. Robin commenced operation of a small restaurant on 1 June 2011 with an operating capital of 307800 Operating capital simply means capital. He did not set up a proper accounting system. Hmm, not a good thing. However, he provided the following information certified by his accountant. Okay, so we are given now a list of balances here. So we're seeing building, furniture and fixtures, vehicles and machinery and equipment. So that's all of your non-current assets. Then we have receivables or debtors, payables or creditors, inventory, six-month loan, mortgage, cash and bank. 
Now, what do they want us to do? It says here, using the order of permanence, draw up a classified balance sheet, statement of financial position for R. Robin at the close of business on 31st May 2012. The closing capital must be included. Okay, so that's 11 marks. So we want a balance sheet in order of permanence. So of course, please always remember to head up your statements unless they already head it up for you. Name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies or as on when it applies. So of course, order of permanence, permanent means long lasting. The order of permanence means you're starting with the longer lasting assets first. If you need to check out my balance sheet playlist, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you want some more information on the different ways you can present your balance sheet or statement of financial position. So of course, again, permanence means long lasting and we're going to start with the longest, longest lasting assets first, which are your non-current assets. So they were kind enough to provide us with the non-current assets here. So we're just going to fill those in. So we're going to start with the building, 260,000, furniture and fittings, 15,000, machinery and equipment, 40,000, and vehicles, 48,500, giving us a subtotal for non-current assets of 363,500. And now we're going to start work on our current asset section. So with current assets, we go stock, debtors, bank, and cash. And of course, I have a couple of things in between there. So we'll, let's look for the inventory. So we have inventory here. 14,200, let's populate that across here. Now there was the receivables, 11,006, so we're gonna put that here as well. And don't forget we had cash and bank at the bottom here, but of course bank goes before cash, because usually cash is considered to be the most liquid current asset and the least permanent, right, in liquid form itself. So we have a subtotal for current assets of 31,006, which we'll add to our subtotal for non-current assets of 363,500. That's going to give us a subtotal for total assets of 395,100, from which, of course, we simply subtract our liabilities. And again, because it's order of permanence, we are starting with our non-current liabilities. Now, across in this list of balances, there was one non-current liability, the mortgage of $140,000. So we're going to put mortgage 140 and bring a subtotal. Now you could just have put the single line item of 140 instead of having it in this column and then that column. But I'm just doing it for the sake of uniformity of presentation of the different sections. So in other words, each section looks relatively the same. And current liability. So we had a couple of these, right? I'm seeing that we had payables or creditors. And we also had a six month loan. So it's a loan and it's for six months, which is less than one year. And any liability which is due within less than one year is considered a current liability. So we're going to put those items here, have a subtotal for current liabilities, and then a subtotal again for total liabilities. And now we are simply going to take the 395 one total assets and subtract total liabilities to give us what we call net assets. And of course, net assets are financed by our capital balance. So the closing capital is 243,900. Okay, we have one more part of this question which actually helps us to flesh out the capital section because as most of you all probably know or are asking, Chris, we have opening capital. Why aren't we you know, doing opening capital plus net profit minus drawings and getting closing capital? Well, that's actually what we're gonna do in the next part of the question. We're gonna work out net profit. Okay, so in part C, it's telling us that R. Robin advises that during the first year of operation, he withdrew $65,000 from the business. So that's drawings. It says, using information on closing capital from part B above, calculate R. Robin's profit for the year, show you're working clearly. Right, so we have to calculate net profit. And I know some of you are asking, but Chris, how are we going to calculate net profit? Do we need to do an income statement? Well, the answer is... No, we don't necessarily have to do one if we have a certain set of other information. So if you think about your capital section in your balance sheet, it's usually opening capital plus net profit minus drawings equal to closing capital. Now, if we need to find net profit, we're going to have to transpose or make net profit the subject of the formula. So a little bit of math here, right? So we're going to have to move across both the opening capital figure and the drawings figure. So drawings, of course, when you move it over, instead of subtracting it, you're going to add it to closing capital. And then the opening capital, of course, was a positive figure on that side. So you're going to have to subtract it. 
So, as this work in here will show, calculation of net profit for the year ended 31st May 2012, we're going to start with the closing capital that we just found in Part B of 243,900. We're going to add the drawings figure of 65,000, which the question gave to us wholesale. And we are also going to subtract the opening capital figure. So that's going to be put there. So of course, as you can see, it's closing capital or capital at end, add drawings, minus capital at start, and that gives us the net profit, which here was relatively small, only $1,100. And that's basically it. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the Jan 2013 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about any item inside of this video, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any other videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts that are free to download. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.